22%. So it's good news that we went up one percentage point when it comes to engagement. Well, the journalist in me is like, well, what's up with the other 77%? What's up with them? Are they not engaged? Are they part of the 44% who say that they are chronically stressed? Do they make up the majority of individuals who say they're looking to quiet quit and join the great resignation? And we're not even talking about the astronomical amount lost in productivity. Clearly, the way we work isn't working. This is a toxic soup for burnout. The world changed on us. And I would offer to you today that those little loop-de-loops in the graph that I'm showing you right now, you see the arrows go in the same place. It's how we get here that's different. And I would say that those little loop-de-loops are opportunities. They're a cushion. We can take the forces that are bearing down on us, and we, as particularly you all, as human resource workers, can seize this moment and create the kind of work environments where we all want to be, where we can all thrive, where we can all go further, faster together. And the first step towards that is acknowledging how we feel. Again, from the mental health work I've done, you've got to name our feelings. You can't sweep it under the rug, act like it doesn't exist. Feelings that aren't dealt with will eventually bubble up to the surface and you will deal with them one way or the other. So the first step is to say I'm angry, to say I'm stressed, to say I'm frustrated, to say I need change, to say I'm scared, to say I need help. So feel the feels first, and then let's talk about what do we want. Another survey looked at over 50,000 workers in 44 countries, and they asked them, what do you want? What would make work feel like you were engaged at work? What would make you feel like you were engaged at work? Anybody want to take a stab at what number, the number one thing people said? Exactly, okay. Honest day's work for our honest day's work. And then the second was fulfillment, meaningful work. That there's a purpose to me getting up and going to work every day. The third was authenticity and the fourth was well-being. Now what's interesting about authenticity, I know sometimes we hear this word batted about a lot and it sends shivers up the spine of the senior leadership. Authenticity, they're being their authentic self. Well, authenticity is not showing up at a senior leadership meeting in a polka dot swimsuit or blasting your latest breakup or Vegas exploits across a team's call. That is not authenticity. That's not authentic, that's chaotic. <laughs> authenticity is, and what the respondents said is, I can be my true self, that my unique talents, gifts, and abilities will add value to the whole within the parameters of a professional setting. I can be my true self. And then the fourth was well-being, both physical and mental well-being. But what's really interesting about the respondents when they talked about well-being is not that I'm okay, but that my coworkers care that I'm okay, that my team cares about my well-being. So if we looked at the toxic soup of burnout, this is the antidote to that soup.